Hi, welcome to Dark Mode. So excited to have you. This is going to be such a great episode. We're going to talk all things light phone and all things attention and how we can move away from smartphones and bring back our life. Welcome to Dark Mode. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I love to talk about it, obviously. <laughs> no doubt. Well, just a bit of background here. Kai is the co-founder and CEO of Light, a simplified phone designed to be used as little as possible. It offers utility and peace of mind, which we've become accustomed to with our smartphones in our back pocket, always there. While eliminating the distractions, manipulation and stress of social media, the news or advertisements, being more connected can't possibly be what we need to be happier. And did I get this right that the company catchphrase is a phone for humanity? Yeah, that's one of them. We also love talking about how light phone is designed to be used as little as possible. And that's almost like the company, like the value that we really care about. You know, like to me, it's like designing a hammer, a screwdriver, right? A beautiful tool, do one thing well, and then you put it away. It's not about going back in time. It's about designing and using your technology tools intentionally without the underlying business model of, you know, like try to make money off our data, time, attention. So, yeah. Amazing. Very philosophical. I love it. I, I noticed you have a design background as well, Kai, and we can go into all of that because I love good design. <laughs> Got a couple of patents for Lightphone, which is very cool. But I do want to talk immediately about the fact that you built a business around something that's probably really contrary to what we see coming out of the fastest growing companies in the world at the moment. Big tech, of course, monetizes time and attention and all of our data. And we know that's called a bit of an attention economy at the moment. So you're doing actually the exact opposite, which I think is really remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's just out of a reaction of what's, what's happening the last, you know, 10 years, I suppose. My co-founder, Joe, and I, we, we both have design background. I used to build and develop a smartphone for Motorola and Nokia Blackberry, and I quit the job. Deciding now I'll never make a phone again. It makes no sense. And until I joined this incubator that Google created for designers, yes, ironically, the whole thing started with in the Google incubator, right? But I think it's logical because this is 2014. We were in the incubators meeting all investors, right? Successful entrepreneur and obviously most of the companies are making software tools for iPhone, for Android, for watch, right? And the more we talk to people and the more we, we realize that, you know, the last thing the society needed from me is another app, right? It's like millions, millions of apps and platforms are using this model that maximize time, attention, and data to sell it to advertiser so that they can make a lot of money. Everyone said their product or app is free, but it's not really free, right? So the more you dive into the model, the more you realize this is so unfair to average consumer, to kids, to anyone, in my opinion, right? Millions, millions of apps are designed with this intention to maximize engagement. And as a designer, as you know, if that's your intention, if this is what you need to do, you will design a product that's sticky, right? You, you try to make sure no one falls off, right? Like that's why the spinning wheel, that's why the flying color, that's why all kinds of unnecessary informations and also the encouragement of engage to the platform. Like what's the easiest way to get people to engage the negative stuff, the people, the stuff that get people pissed off. Right? So you engage, you comment, you like, you don't like, and that's, they don't really care. People, the companies don't really care what's the impact to our mental health, to, to us as a human being, right? As long as they could get engagement up and they can make money. So I just don't feel like that should be the only way our technology is heading to. I feel like, you know, like, why can we create and design technology tools without a component? Right. And so many press and or people calling us anti-smartphone, anti-technology. I'm not anti-technology. I, I love technology. 
I just don't like being tracked or being advertisement when I don't want to see anything, right? I just want to get a direction from A to B or hack someone. <laughs> and that's it. That's all I wanted to do. Why can I have that? So that's how we started the brand. That's amazing. I, I want to dive further into that shortly, but so this is 2014, you're in the incubator. Yeah. What happens next for Lightphone and the development of where do you go from the incubator to where you are today? Yeah, so we started with the first light phone, light phone one, the original light phone. It's just phone call only. You could call, you could receive phone calls and it attached to your smartphone number. So it's designed as a secondary phone for you to take a break, right? So we, the, 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 the expectation is that you will have your smartphone for your day, whatever you want to do. But when you want to take a break, just turn on light phone from your smartphone and leave your smartphone behind. And all your call, incoming call, forwarded to Light Phone. And you could call from the Light Phone as well, but nothing else, just phone call. We, we did a crowdfunding campaign, raised enough money for us to build the phone. We sold, I don't know, tens of thousands of Light Phone 1 from 2015 to 2017. And uh, we, start, we started getting a lot of feedback from customers that telling us they love going light, meaning leave smartphone behind, use Light Phone. They love going late. They feel so free. They have a great, you know, night with the partners. So no one's on their smartphone anymore. But when they want to go home, like there's no Lyft, no, no Uber. They have to stand around waiting for a taxi for half hour to get home. And just there'll be there, uh, a lot of people telling us that, Hey, Kai, if only you have Uber, if only you have direction, if only you have two more things, right? That's all I need. I don't want smartphone anymore. I don't want light phone to be a secondary phone. I want light phone to be my primary phone or I want to use it more often. And I think that's when we start to uh, just, you know, re revisit our principles. And we realized that creating essential tools, utilities is not against whatever we're trying to do. We, you know, like if, if I offer a note-taking tool, a text message that allows a couple million people feel that com feel comfortable, feel that peace of mind to go light. Why not? You know, as long as it doesn't have the noise and distraction, as long as it doesn't have the, the advertisement components, we're happy to create them and offer that to our customers. Love it, Kai. I want to go on a slight tangent here and just explain something that I learned recently, having read the Tech Baron's book and talks all about a lot of these themes. But I learned about nomophobia recently, which is the fear of being without one's phone. Symptoms for that include regular and time-consuming use, feelings of anxiety when the phone is not available, ring anxiety, which is, you know, checking for messages or those phantom ringtones when they don't happen, and even financial problems as a consequence of the use. And of course, as it relates to the software and the apps, an extension of that is the mental health implications. And I think it can really be summarized by the fact that like where we are not weak willed, but the phones and the technology are purposely designed to be addictive. So there's now moves us into a bit of a movement I'm seeing, and I'd be interested in your thoughts, Kai, but I know locally and there's discussions I have every week about digital minimalism and like regaining mm. our own control of our attention and our focus. And I think that's, we're at a really interesting time as it relates to internet and phone addiction. Yeah, it's definitely addiction. I mean, we go to bed with our smartphone, wake up with it, go to the bathroom with it, <laughs> go on a date with it. <laughs> when was the last time anyone ever said that? Like, oh, I just spent five hours on Instagram. I loved it. I'm going to do it again right away because it feels so good. Right? No one ever said that. Like, we all just like, <laughs> What, the ha what, what just happened? Like, why did I spend all this time swiping? Where did my life just go? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm you'll gonna, never get that time back. <laughs> I'm doing this, right? And this, that's everyone. And I think just evident, evidently enough that we are addicted. And you could also argue, like, why do I need a light phone? Like, I just shut off my smartphone or delete all the app, right? Turn it black and white. I mean, I think if those helps, that's awesome. I think I'm all for it. But at the same time, my mic goes to like, okay, you know, say if you're a smoker, you try to quit smoking as addiction, will you bring a cigarette box with you 24 seven? 
will you do that? Like, oh, I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to have this cigarette box in my pocket. Everywhere I go. <laughs> I, Very counterintuitive. Not, yeah. It doesn't work like that. We now have a lot of customers and we start to get people telling us they feel less stressed out. They feel less anxious. They sleep better. Their heart rate reduced. The screen time reduced 99%. And all these health, healthy benefits that come with breaking away from internet, from social media and smartphone, if not all the time, just taking a break is healthy, you know, in any sense, right? Just taking a break, it's logical, it's reasonable. And I think the problem is we don't take a break now. We never take a break with internet in your pocket. You know, we used to have like, I don't know how you, how old you guys are. I'm 40, 40 years old. And I went through the period without smartphone. And you have like, you sit down on your computers. You, that's when you connect it to the online activities, right? You do social media, you do all your things. And then you, you stop, close your laptop, stand up, move away. You're disconnected. You're back to your real life. Your mind is off social media and anything like that, right? Now you don't. You're always 24-7 thinking about your smartphone. And there are, I'm sure you guys know this, but there are researchers out there saying that just the smartphone itself in your pocket, you feel it, you see it on the desk, face down. doesn't matter what you do. As long as you see it, you feel it. Your mind is always somewhere else. You're not, you're not focused. You're always distracted. So I, this might be exaggerating, but I think this is a crisis of humanity. Like this, this is not how human lives. <laughs> why would I, why would I want to spend eight hours on a little screen when I could go out or having a great time with my partners or family or friends or making conversation, no eye contact, right? The best, I think this article is about iPhone, someone tried iPhone and the best or the biggest realization that she had was that she's queuing up to pay for grocery doesn't have her smartphone as a light phone and she just like oh it is okay to just like you know just look around and <laughs> just be in that moment for like a minute without without escaping to social media or getting entertainment from entertainment from your smartphone it is okay it is enough <laughs> You have so many things around you that you could we could pay attention to just standing there for a couple of minutes waiting to pay for your grocery. It is okay. Uh, I think we don't have that anymore for a lot of people that um never um you know go out without the mini computers. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> I do as well because Kai mentioned Uber and I was like, that's the only reason I didn't get a light phone. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> oh, no, it sure is definitely a legit tool. And we're trying to create a ride sharing tools as well so that more people feel comfortable. We have a roadmap of utility uh, tools that we wanted to create ourselves. Obviously, you can say that, hey, you now become a smartphone. You have all the app or tools, right? Why? What's the, where's the line? Right? Uh, and in, to me and to, to our team, that the lines is really clear. I could summarize that into three principles or three guidelines. One, no advertisement. Number two, every action has a clear ending. Every action the user takes has a clear ending. Like you get a direction from A to B, it ends. That's it. Or you text someone or you listen to a playlist to help you concentrate or relax. That's it. The third guideline is that we will never have infinite feeds, nothing to browse, nothing to scroll, you know. So as long as a tool fit into those guidelines, we're happy to create them to offer that through life on through light operating system. So again, it's not, we're not anti-technology. I just think technology should be invisible. It should not be the center of our life. It should not be the things that we think about all the time, right? You know, uh, another really um, powerful compliment from our users is that someone goes like for the weekend and tell us that when they go, like, when they go out last weekend, <clears throat> they forget about it, they have a phone. They have a light phone with them, but they forget about it. They don't even remember they have a light phone. It's like, Yes, man, this is, 
That's exactly what we want you to do. Just like, don't think about your life though. Hopefully you feel like you have the right tools with you. You know, you have those tools. Now forget about it. Live your life. Do the things you want to do the most. Um, yeah. I love that. And I love the three principles. When you were talking, I just thought technology should be an enabler of life, not the dictator of life. And I think yeah. your operating system and your platform allows that to happen. The one thing for me that I consistently go back to when you know researching for the episode and understanding more about light and light phone was the consistent triage effect. That's not a coin term. That's just something I've made up. But for me, it's the consistent <laughs> triage, right? It's I wake up in the morning, I'll do a quick triage of what has happened overnight. I'll put that down. And then whatever happens next, I know that triage has then been broken. So I need to go back and triage what's next. And it's that mm. consistent feeling of always consistently triaging you know, everything that's on there. And that to me is dangerous because you, that's when you get in that infinite loop. Yeah. And no one said that. We never say smartphone is it evil or oh, don't use it. I mean, that's not, not what we're saying. We're saying that we should and must have options. Mm. We must have tools that's not designed on top of all this advertisement or engagement or, you know, every company is behind your phone is trying to ping you for more data and make money, right? It's just not, that shouldn't be the only option. I should be able to wake up knowing that I have, you know, not thinking about my smartphone, not thinking about my phone. <laughs> you know, when I wake up and just do my things and then when I need to call somebody or text or get a direction or whatever, I'll go, if I need to emails, I'll sit down with my laptop or my tablet. I'll do that. It's more pleasant anyway, the bigger screen, right? Versus Staying in bed and swiping with the blue light in your face, not enjoyable. But we, like I said, I think the most, the, I'm fully convinced this is such a crisis just because we don't think it's a problem. But if you just look up, like from the restaurant, from train station, from airport, if you just look up, it's like, what, what are we doing? Like everyone is swiping and staring, like, I, you know, maybe individual experience is fulfilling. I am not denying the aspect on social media that's very helpful, like communities that you never, you're not going to have in your physical space. That's helpful. No one's denying that. But at the same time, my angle to that is that like every one good thing's happening on social media. I think there's like thousand things go around on social media. And what we, what are we giving up to, 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 you know, to keep that convenience with you 24 seven? What's the thing that we give up? Is that, is it worth it? I don't think it's worth it for me, but everyone's different. And I want life phone for me and you know, my co-founder Joe wanted as well. So we both want this tool for ourselves. And I refuse to believe no one else thinks the same. No one else have the same feeling, right? It has to, like everyone is thinking the same thing, but what are you going to do now? Right? If you don't want a smartphone, if you don't like your smartphone. What's your option? Go back to Nokia candy bar two. G, they still have social media, even though it's designed 20 years ago, it's bulky. No one's using them or tweak your Android iPhone, delete all the, delete all the app, turn it black and white. If any of those works amazing, I, you know, all for it, but I feel like it's just need different hardware, different software, different intention from every tools that we offer. That's when you can really break away from this vicious cycle. Well, I would totally agree with you, Kai. You mentioned before, might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I definitely agree and concur that it's a threat to humanity. Bit of an existential crisis, maybe we could put it into that category. And I do think it now comes back to the awareness around it and then making that actionable decision to do something. I want to, at this point, give a shout out to Pat because since he got the light phone, and I know he's recently been on holidays, but he looks fantastic. His skin's glowing. Oh, he looks like super youthful. <laughs> it's got to be the light phone, I reckon. <laughs> but even speaking with Pat recently, he was saying, and to your similar sentiment that you just mentioned, Kai, having a dinner table conversation and people's mentality is, oh, I'm addicted to the phone or there's nothing I can do about it. But like, hang on, well, I would actually challenge you and say, there's plenty of things you can do about it. You could start with turning off notifications, not taking your phone to the bedroom as a starting point. Or you could just go straight to light phone. And I even said that to someone in the recent week. And I'm like, huh. Oh. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> keep so oh, light phone. it then. <laughs> light phone is not, I always said that light phone is not a magic 
pill. It's not a magic tablet. You can't just take it and expecting your addiction goes away. It doesn't work like that, right? So I think that's a lot of that. That that aspect creates a lot of tension for people who want to try life phone. Because if you're going with the expectation that oh today I'm gonna leave my smartphone behind, I am gonna use life phone, and you expect you will feel like comfortable right away, it's not gonna happen. You will feel anxious. That's the symptom of addiction. The first twenty minutes, thirty minutes, you will feel that withdrawal. You feel like, oh, you tap your pocket. You're like, oh, where's I? What do I do? Like you're standing there. You don't know what to do. You're like, I don't feel comfortable looking at people, making conversation, making eye contact. You know. But the magic moment is that after that first twenty, thirty minutes, you forget about your smartphone. You started to, you know, look at this building or this cloud or talking to this person right next to me, making eye contact. You started to. Engage your surroundings, and we did a trial back in 2014. We give people, we take away people's participants' smartphone for a couple of hours or day, ask them to go out without smartphone and come back, tell us how they feel. And most of people came back saying that's the best time they have. They memorize what's happening. They have they vividly knowing what's happening, and they intentionally doing things that they wanted to do. So I guess. Like intentionality is something that we really care about. That applies to how we create the phone, every tools, as well as how users use those tools. Right? Like we want our user to intentionally use every tools, meaning that like we have a music tool, right? Like phone, you could create a playlist when you're sitting down on your computers. You could create a playlist. That helps you maybe calm down, maybe be more productive, or help you、uh, relax, right? But you intentionally create a playlist. So when you're on your life phone, you can listen to that playlist to that for that purpose, and that's it. There's no browsing. It's not a Spotify. It's not a Apple Music. There's no browsing. No recommendation. I don't take your data. I don't know what you're listening to. I don't track that. So it's the intentionality is such an important,、uh, I guess. Keywords for everything that we do here.、Hmm. Attentions—it's for me personally, and I know that I'm not the only one here. Not to speak on behalf of the community of Dark Mode, but I know there's a lot of folks that struggle with that attention piece. Right? Even since we've started this recording, I've looked down at my phone twice for no reason other than triage. So it breaks the attention span, and for me, I find myself deep in concentration and attention at certain hours of the day, which is my focus work time. And even then, if I break concentration, I've I've consciously told myself now you need to go for a walk and come back so that you can get into the attention mode zone and perhaps leave your phone somewhere else. The question I've got for you, Kai, is you mentioned addiction and withdrawal. How do we curb that addiction feeling? I would find for myself, moving to light phone would have to be a transition. How do you curb that barrier to entry? Yeah, definitely. It's a transition. It's a process for sure for everyone. Unless you have smartphone and you always use a feature phone, a simple phone, then that's a different story. Going light is not gonna fix your addiction right away. It's a process. You need to go in with the expectation that you will start feeling anxious, and hopefully, the thing that we always talk about is how do we help people find the thing, things that they wanted to do the most. And I think that's the magic、um, moment. We always tell people that hey, going light is about breaking away from the convenience, convenient noise and distraction, but doing things that you love the most. Whether or not that's hanging out with your friends, families, reading a book, pick up photography again, painting, creating music, take a walk. Right? I think defining what you wanted to do. What do you want to do when you go light? Really help with the transitions, like having a goal in mind. And I think that's the whole point of going light as an experience, right? We, as a company, as a brand, we are selling the idea of lifestyle of going light, right? It's it's not about the phone. Obviously, we're selling a phone. We have our SIM card. We that's how we make money. But for users, we want you to experience, make the experience special. 
Like you could always turn off your smartphone. Don't bring your don't bring your smartphone or delete the app and go out, right? But if you use like phone, you are actively making a decisions that the next hour, the next five hours, I'm going out without smartphone. I decided I wanted to be focused. I decided I want to enjoy this two hours without distraction. I think when that happens. The trans transition or the experience of going light will be so much easier versus like oh I'm just gonna I'll see what happens I'll leave my smartphone and go out and then I think that's when you hit a wall <laughs> like, oh oh no, I, I want to check my social you know, I want to check this I want to do that like you have a lot of everyone has a lot of excuses why this wall worked you said it earlier but you, if you really look into why it's like Do we really need email access twenty four seven? Is that really? <laughs> yes. Can't take a break from your email. Do you really need Uber twenty four seven? Like maybe there's a time like Saturday morning, uh, taking a break, taking a walk down the street. No way you're going. You're not gonna get on a taxi. You're just gonna spend two hours trying to relax, walking around, trying to chill. Right? You don't. You don't need Uber. You don't need emails. You don't need anything. So. I think you know, like, be intentionally spending your time. Choose what tool makes sense. Is is the first step, and that's the most interesting conversation we had with our customers too. Like, what tool makes sense? Right, my essential tools might not be the same as yours. You know, I might need music as my essential tool. You don't, you probably don't need that, right? So, I think that's always the first step to. Thinking to think about reduce the screen consumption or reduce the smartphone consumption. Think about what tool make sense to you, and use it accordingly. Or understand what the tool is doing to you. Like understand how Facebook is making money. How what's the practice? How is that? How would that impact your mental health? I think a lot of people understand that now. I'm not an entrepreneur, Kai. So forgive me for this one, but it would be cool for the light phone, as you mentioned, right? It's customizable. To get the light phone and then customize it yourself. You know, you can say, "Hey, I actually need Uber every now and then. I only need it for this day, so I'm going to put it on." Is that <laughs> the you know like a marketplace of customization for the light phone? Is that the future of perhaps? Sounds like you yeah. just described Gen Four of light phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, it's, I mean this existing model. Existing oh, existing model. model. Nice. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. So you know, we have ten tools on light phone too right now, right? And you. It customize those tools. You don't have to have all the tools. You could even disable text message if you don't want text message. So you could just have phone, and that's it. That's <laughs> awesome, Kai. Could you show us that again? That's really cool. And I saw there's yeah. a little podcast section in there. Obviously, you've got dark mode as、oh. you click into that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this、cool. is the home page, and this is the tool box,、uh, as we call them, or app. Toolbars and those are the tools that we designed. This is a e ink e paper screen, so it, it's just gray scale, black and white. There's no colors, no animations, but you could touch. You could use the touch screen. Sorry, you could also call and text whoever on your um on your phone with a full keyboard. So if I tap into a contact, that's like the history between you and this person. You could call or text. Like Love、that. it. Yeah, very cool. Sign very me cool. up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Does it come in dark mode, Kai? Um, sorry. Can you turn the light phone into dark mode? An inverse. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you... here we go. This is this is a moment of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, under settings, because because e ink only have basically two colors, right, black and white. So you could turn the background.、Um, Uh, dark and and turn the fonts white. <laughs> Could you give us a demo of that? And that's the default. That's the default mode for for,、uh, for a black version. So if you get a black light phone, that will be the default background color. Love it. Here is the light phone in dark mode. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? That's the moment. That is very cool. <laughs> Thanks for the demo, Kai.、Uh, it's very cool to see the light phone in action. Of course. I can see so many use cases of it. I, from yeah, I keep going back to my personal experience here, but 
I would love to transition to the light phone. And as you mentioned, having that step with the goal towards what you're trying to achieve with light, I think that's the key there. Yeah, 50, I mean, I want to say half of our customers use light phone as their secondary phone, like with the smartphone, along with the smartphone. So you use smartphone for the job or during the week and they switch to light phone when they need to or the weekend. Another half of our customers use light phone as their primary phone, exclusively use light phone as a phone. That's how I do it. But I have a tablet that I do everything else on my tablet, on my laptop. So it's just basically different tools, right? So I have a phone that I carry with me that has the essential tools I needed to get direction, listen to podcasts. No, and that's that. And then I have my laptop and tablet doing social media account for the companies. We are a startup. We use social media to as a channel to talk to our users, but we just don't we just don't pay advertisement to promote like phone. So yeah, it's a different tool. And I think a lot of our customers started to use light phone as a secondary phone and then realize that they don't need smartphone anymore or they don't need smartphone that often. They so start using light phone more often and then completely switch, meaning that use, you use light phone as a primary phone and have smartphone as a backup. Light phone has a hotspot feature. Tell you could use the hotspot feature on your smartphone when you need it. Okay, so that's, that's really interesting to me to see the behavior change. I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. Thanks for Thank founding Light. <laughs> Bye. Appreciate it. <laughs> On behalf yeah. of everyone in the world. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's great. I'm very curious on the business side. How is the business going? If you're happy to share a little bit, like in terms of number of customers and how you're seeing the adoption of the Light phone? Yeah, well, we started in 2014, Light phone 1. We introduced Light phone 2 in 2019. And it's 2022 now. We see growth every year. We're still a small company in Brooklyn and New York, but we now have tens of thousands of users globally, 80% US, 70, 80% US, and probably 15% UK, EU, and 5% the rest of the world. But yeah, the sales are doing well. We are able to sustain ourselves. The companies, we have investors that help us, obviously, and and one thing that's really interesting is we have a lot of investors coming from the complete, completely opposite industry. Like, you know, Twitter co-founder is my investor. <laughs> and a lot of social media executives that left the company and joined us to help us create these options. So it's been going well. We sell hardware. That's obviously the primary revenue. We have our own SIM card service plan in US using AT&T network. So we also have a part of recurring revenue from the service plan offering. So uh, we're doing fine. And I think this movement or rather the problem is never going to stop. It's going to get worse from here with 5G, with AI, with chat GPT, with, I don't know, like it's gonna, it's the technology will accelerate, but at the same time, the, the other direction, I think, will equally accelerate, meaning more people, in my mind, will feel the tension, uh, whether it's coming from the privacy concern, coming from the addiction aspect, from, I don't know, from parents' use case, right? I think this whole segment, it's just starting to heat up because people start to realize how those companies make money. They start to realize your mental health is important. Your personal data is valuable. Um, you shouldn't just give it away to all the millions of other companies to make you know, billions of dollars from you. And it is not normal to be tracked 24 seven. <laughs> and I think that's become a common understanding now. The problem will never stop. The problem will get worse. And I think more people is going to wake up and decided to try a different option, not big tech, not Apple, not Samsung or Google, just, you know, someone they trust, so some brand, not someone, some company they trust to create product that's not taking advantage of 
our vulnerability because human loves quick reaction, quick dopamine hits, and then that's how you get hooked, right? And design a product to attack this vulnerability. I don't think it's reasonable. I don't think that should be the only direction. So we want it to be the brand that's opposite to to the big techs and creating product that just, you know, tools, modern tools that serve humanity so we could get back to our life faster. We could finish this task and then I could go on and live my life. Not like I'll use hammer and then I'll swipe hammer for six hours just so the hammer can <laughs> Hammer swipe. <laughs> yeah, is that why is that okay? I don't, I don't think it's okay. Thanks for the insights, Kai. It's awesome to hear. It brings me back to a tagline in big tech, which I've been privy to around if you're not paying for the use of the technology with a fee, you're paying for it through your privacy or your well being. Well said. And it's it, you, you're paying for it one way or another. You're paying yeah. for it. I think that need to be transparent. Now, I, I don't think everyone knows that. Like we always just, oh, it's free, it's free. It's not free. You're paying way more than you're supposed to. Like you're paying with your family's photo. You're paying for, you're paying with your location everywhere you go. You're paying for your text message on WhatsApp. Or, and I don't know what the messenger people use, but yeah, you, you're paying for it one way or another. And I think it's time to make that transparent and it's time to offer everyone else, everyone a different option. The commoditization, though, object to that statement. So that's that will be an interesting outlook in, in the years to come, right? Because they're making billions of dollars off this data. And I just don't think that the general population understand how much they are paying for it. And it just hasn't come to fruition yet to, to see the yeah. negative effects of how much we have paid for it. Yeah. I hope we'll get to a place. I think it's going to stop. It's realistically, that's how Google become a billion dollar company, right? It's not going to stop. At the same time, I think when we get to a place that everyone understand it, I think it's perfectly logical to design around that model, meaning that if you're willing to pay for your data, just knowing, just know that you will be tracked, you will receive advertisement, you will be distracted. Now it's free. You know, if you make that choice, it's your choice. It's fine. Right. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And if you don't want to do that here, yeah, you have different tool like Lifo or something else that's just a hopefully beautifully designed tool. That's it. There's no advertisement, not going to show you anything you don't want, not tracking you. So as long as that's clear, I think it's reasonable business model. Ben, I do think we see the negative consequences of smartphones and big tech mm. at the moment, if you look under the covers enough, but even from a few let's say chat GPT searches, Google searches, <laughs> because there's a lot of erosion in mental health, uh, just in general across the population. We saw there's the Facebook contagion study where some, where Facebook purposely redesigned the news feeds to make it a lot more negative sentiment and therefore make users feel a lot more anxiousness and depression. And so I think like absolutely the negative consequences of, yeah. All of this is yeah. here, here right now. For me, it's the material impact of it, right? We haven't yet seen the material impact of the data that we've had harvested. That to me is where I think people will then realize, okay, there's a problem right now. Mental health is so, we're so baked into these technologies like social media that we're unaware of what is outside. Our blinkers are so focused on the infinite scroll. That mental health impact is inside all of us at the moment with that relation to the technology. Whereas on the outside, the material impact is where it's going to provide really serious go. consequence. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are reports with saying that the suicide rate among teenagers increased since iPhone introduced in 2009. It's like, yep, exactly. there's no evidence to show you that we, not just teenagers, everyone's mental health or anxiety or stress peaked after smartphone introduced. I mean, maybe that's not enough, but I think at some point we will have enough evidence to show people that this is not healthy. Yeah. And make some change to it. And yeah, I 
firmly believe human will, will react when things are not human. You know, like that's what why life won't become a thing because we we just feel weird about swiping phone for eight hours, right? And I think people is gonna react and make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go for walks in the park and hug my friends and not be distracted by smartphones. Like that's absolutely the life. Yeah, that's so much better than swiping Instagram for five hours and feel horrible about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> absolutely. Totally. Kai, putting your entrepreneur hat on for the audience of dark mode, <laughs> what are some lessons you've learned in the journey of light? And is there any, is there any advice you would give to budding entrepreneurs in the audience? Yeah, it's going to sound pretty, pretty cliche, but the thing I realized is that you just got to believe in what you're doing. Otherwise, it's a waste of time, meaning that we've been doing this for six years and both me and my co-founder believe in the mission. We think this is really important to ourselves and to other people. And that's why we were able to keep at it, just trying to make sure we keep moving forward and progressing. Obviously, with a lot of help from our investors and especially our customers that are telling us they, you know, the heart rate reduced, oh, the family relationship improved. Like I have a, I remember this email from our dad emailed us saying that the reason he bought a light phone is because he and his kids are sitting there watching TV and he was on this email on the phone and his kids is like, dad, could you like just put it down? We, I mean, we're watching this. I want to tell you about the day or the, what's happening. And that's when he realized that, oh, something is horribly wrong with my behavior with smartphones. So that's when he went online and find life phone and bought a life phone and use it. And then he bought a life phone for the entire family. It's like stories like that's really inspiring and resonating with us. And I think when you are the believer in your missions, you will start resonating with a lot more people. And that's what keep us going because as entrepreneurs, as you guys probably know, and maybe your listener knows as well, it's a hard journey. You have a thousand reasons to give up every day. <laughs> yeah, a thousand reasons to give up to say, ah, oh, fuck this, I'm going to find a job in cool. <laughs> ben, for reference, that's the lightphone.com slash family pack. <laughs> I am already on it. <laughs> uh, Too <yeah>. good. <laughs> Definitely use for that's been the number one inspiration. Well, it's, uh, it's been... That's amazing. It's really cool to see that feedback from the community as well. And mm -hmm. definitely a liberating feeling. But that's probably a good point, Kai. How does in Australia, I know that it is active for Australians to consume and there is network connectivity for the Australian region as well. Is the best place to reach out to the lightphone.com? Is there any other way that our community can engage with, with the lightphone folks? Yeah, we have a compatibility check site on our website. You can check which carrier that's compatible with lightphone. And you can obviously email support at the lightphone.com with the, we will have our team will respond with the questions that anyone might have. There's also an official thread in, uh, uh, on Reddit. There's a whole thread about a life phone and just use for that sharing, sharing the stories, pro and cons. They hate it. They loved it. So I think that's very helpful. Like as a non-biased information, like don't listen to me. Like I'm biased. <laughs> but listen to those, maybe read up those people's stories, how they feel bad and good and and how that changed their life. And I think the first step is always the most difficult, meaning that, you know, you're trying to deciding whether or not to get a life phone, how much lifestyle change that you, you need to do, what need to be changed. I think a lot of those threats talk about that as well, just the anxiety or nervousness getting to life phone. I think that's helpful to other, for other people to read about. I remember just people sharing like the first weekend, you know, like went to school without, 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 uh, without smartphone and met new friends, having conversation and feeling stressed out without social media. It's very real, you know, and I loved it. Like I said, it's not biased. It's just real stories from people using it. 
That's awesome. We'll have to get a bit of a affiliation into Lightphone and get the community down here fired up, Kai. We're ready to go. When you're ready to launch Australian operations, come and let Ben and I know. <laughs> we just say when you're ready to light up the ANZ market. Hey! <laughs> yeah. That's been amazing, Kai. Re- really appreciate having you on the podcast and spending your time with us. It's such an important topic and a technology that I think will help redefine the way we interact with, uh, with what's in our pocket and the, the social networks that seem to be consuming too much of our attention in our daily life. So we appreciate you spending the time with us, Kai. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And a Thanks, big Kai. final shout out to those listeners listening to this episode of Dark Mode on their light phone. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or leave us a rating on your favorite podcast platform. See you on the next episode of Dark Mode.